Hello and welcome to another Raggy's Beer Review. So here we go. Um, I assume this is my triple IPA. And look at the smoke coming out of that. And it's gone from being very, um, gone from being clear, a bit like a craft beer actually when it's sat in a can gone from being clear to quite the hazy beer now and you can see the carbonation going on I'm just watching the head because it doesn't look at that um, probably the last time I'm gonna brew evil dog I, you know in my beery adventures I, I want to go down some beers again uh, I want to do some more grain brewing and I certainly want to try some new stout kits. I think stouts, uh, with my friends, stouts are the ones that are drunk the most. Everyone likes a stout. Whereas not everybody likes this sort of beer, which is a, you know, a tropical uh, beer. So, this is um, Raggy's Triple IPA. Yeah, did I come up with a name for it? I'm not sure if I did or didn't. But uh, we'll call it Raggis Triple IP anyway. Eh? Everyone comes up with daft names for beers. So I might as well join the manor. Uh, it's your own own brew, isn't it? You call it what you like. Um, oh, Raggis XXXC. Bit like triple XP. Yeah, yeah. I, I think of a. I need to think of a good name just for the laugh. We'll give it four X's. Raggy's X X X X. Um. Yeah. Beer review. <laughs> anyway, as we can see, it, it's been weeks and weeks now since it's been brewed couple of months minimum sometime in January I think I brewed it and like I say in the bottle it's crystal clear it settles down a treat and then as soon as you crack it open you can see the colour uh, it's amazing how that is um, I've been today I've been brewing all day five hours of grain brewing um, Learned some things. Um, I actually cheesed the ABV, but I didn't get the amount out that I thought I was going to get because there was a lot of sedimenty shite at the bottom, uh, proteins or whatever they call it. So I dare say, would they settle down? Um, I'd have been better off waiting and not putting it into a different fermenter. But now, now I put it in the other fermenter, the, 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 any sediment is going to be minimal, you know, probably half a litre of that. So uh, I'm still going to make 21 litres of beer, uh, a St. Austell all grain clone that I've done. So, um, yeah, we'll see how that goes, I suppose. You know, the world of beer. I do find that beer kits, there's less wastage on beer kits. Uh, apart from the big oppy ones, like the Imperial Stout, um, the sludge at the bottom, um, you do lose a bit. I mean, to be honest, if you can get as much out as you can, and yet, yeah, the last bit, so what, you know. Um... But here we are, it's settling down there, still carbonations, massive carbonation on that. Do you think I bob bobbed up? I tried to get it to 13% and I do think that uh, there was a slight sugary taste to it. Not sugary, actually not as bad as said Shepherd Neem's glucose, but uh, look, I could taste the bloody sugar in that, terrible. And that's a commercial bit, not some bloke in a shed brewing beer um 
I ain't had another shop in the beer since, and to be honest, I ain't had many supermarket beers since. I, I've been very... I don't know if my journey in beer has changed. And uh, I don't feel the need to get every brand new local beer anymore. And I, I, I do seem to be hitting either breweries that I want to hit, um, or when we grow away, or certainly... Um, obviously now I've gone for this bruiser subscription and seeing how, how, where, how and where that goes. Um, and again, there is a citrus, a tropical aroma on this. I won't say it's quality of you know, it's not quality of big suit, big craft beer breweries, but what was a slight sugary note has turned into quite a boozy note now. Um, oh, I can feel it in my stomach that booziness. Um, Like I say, so another homebrew catch-up on the channel. The last of the catch-ups would be the, the um, um, the toffee apple cider. And I do, I do think I'm going to brew more this year. Um, I look at the beer wall behind me, and I think to myself, these beers not cheap and, it, and it's get, it seems to be getting more expensive all the time um i'm two months away from my birthday so i may get them to pay for some beers for my birthday um or beer kits so beers or beer kits so it's anything i like anyway i don't need more clothes going with clothes don't need more of anything you know don't want to spend money on stuff I'm not going to use. I want to, you know, um, enjoy um, life. Um, sell shite we don't use. You know, get a few quid back. So they're just chucking it or binning it. Recycle. Um, And, uh, yeah, enjoy. Last year was a manic year. We had lots of car issues, two weddings, lots of monetary going out. But we still did a lot. We are working hard to achieve what we get. We're not, we're not rich. We're not no, we're never rich. Um, but we do have a bit of life. Uh, and a little bit of life, you know. We only go out once a week. Maybe sometimes we'll, we'll spot a, we'll get a second night out. But other than that, that's it. Um, but it's all about enjoying that life, isn't it? Hey. Um, And because I've got so much content on the channel, like now, uh, I did get people saying to me, "I can't, we can't watch all your reviews." And I also understand that a lot of my reviews aren't lots of the big thing. It's funny because you put something that's in supermarkets, it gets big views. You put the a lot of these breweries that don't get supermarket status, and you know you don't get the the viral beer reviewers reviewing them and you don't get the, the the score you know you don't get the views on them either but it is what it is um a, a slight change of direction for the channel with the bruiser thing uh 
uh, if every month it's 30 quid, 29 quid, uh, you get eight beers and a glass. And I'm looking at that and I'm thinking, right, so um, it's £3.60, £3.70 a beer. 360? Yeah, round about. 8 threes, 24. 8 60s. Oh. Yeah, so it's a little bit over. It's about 365. Do you know, I pay 365, 4 quid for local breweries that no one's ever heard of. Um. And these, start this month, the beers are from Lakes Bruco. A oh, flipping decent brewery. They've got a fantastic name. They're also coming to Nottingham in, in, in June. So, um, so the, sh a show, the showcase brewery of the month. And I, and I think that's a good thing for the channel. Uh, using Bruiser as a base. Um, they, don't seem very, they don't seem very good on social media. Um, I've tagged them in and there's been nothing back. So they're obviously in a lot of places. They talk to you straight. I, I love people who chat to you straight away. Even if you get them a give give a love, you know, to, or a like to a comment. Um, although sometimes when I post my stuff on other groups, I don't because I don't want someone slagging me off. Um, and it's, it's just me. Um, don't want to get embroiled in negativity. I'd rather post it. And if it's positive, if someone gives you a love, then you know that it's you're gonna you might get a positive comment. If someone is an angry and then comments, it's like, oh fuck that then. Keep away from that. Um But um I've had a cracking day today. I've been doing like I said, I've been doing this um grain brewing and uh, I've been looking at the grain brews of the last year. The first one was the Citra Pale. That turned out amazing. Albeit, I got about 18 flipping litres. Um, then I did the Lenten Lane Chocolate Mild. Forgot all about that. Turned it into a cookie dough mild. Because I didn't really, you know, the mild was okay, but I wanted a cookie dough mild. Uh, I do fancy doing another of the local brewery grain brews. That's, it's on my agenda. When I've got a spare 30 quid, I'm going to drag Andy over, because he likes Totally Brewed, and we're going to redo Totally Brewed, we're going to, you know, Totally Brewed again or something, uh, and, uh, and and wind up the uh, the old owner of Totally Brewed, because he's a bit of a mardy bugger anyway, um, as, as, as so it seems. It's a pity that Stargaze, Starlight, or whatever it's fucking slap in the face uh, wasn't on the all grain website because that would be amazing to rebrew uh, <laughs> and get it near um, but yeah so today um, I, look, I did the grain brewing put 27 litres in and I thought that was a bit too much and in in, you know at the end I thought I'm going to lo lo lose 2 litres but I lost more than 2 litres on the sediment side now, should I have let that settle even more and got more out? Begs that question. Does beg that question. 21 litres isn't bad, though. Yes, yeah, so that, you know, quite a loss. Five litres nearly lost. Four, four to five litres lost, just through being all gunky crap. Um, but 21 litres, I paid 29.99 for the full grain kit. Um, so I've got, I'll have minimum of four, about 40 bottles worth, slightly higher ABV than St. Austell's proper job. Um, what is it? In the bottles, I reckon it's two quid a bottle, isn't it? So, eight quid's worth of bottles, roughly. 60 quid's worth if you take off the fact that you get them on the four for free, possibly. Um... But it's brewed at home, so basically, like, it's not gone into any long-term, you know, basically, it's cask at home. So, mm. yeah. It's exp I, in some ways, it's a bit expensive, brewing it that way. 
the cheaper kits where you get a decent beer from the cheaper kits is possibly the better way of brewing uh, simply because you're getting more for it but it wasn't a good experience today I don't think I knackered up on on any part of it uh, apart from the initial putting the um, putting the beer in uh, the first amount of water in and they said 18 litres but 18 litres wasn't sucking in all the all the grain so you want all the grain you know it's having grain dry on the top because that's good for fuck all so I'm, I'm, I got it so that all the grain the grains all under, just brimming on the water so the mash moving it around and getting that sugar going and I'm quite religious on that this turning and um you know, got no else better to do than sit there and bloody watch it. I will do a live one day and try not to fuck it up. Um, and see, see what other kits are out there. And, uh, you know, and I suppose when you look at a pint of St. Austin in the pub, you're paying four, £4.50, aren't you? So a two quid bottle is actually fucking good value, really, in the grand scheme of things. Uh, in a pub, four pounds summit. So, if you think that what I'm brewing is or full grain on what you'd get in a pub, then the savings are big. Not quite forty pints, thirty six pints times four pound fifty. You can see where you know begs a question if anybody actually um, has done that, brewed their own beer, stuck it in a cask, made out it's from Saint Austell. And if, if they're good at brewing, uh, there's all the chance that you could get away with that. I mean, uh, uh, the legalities, yeah, yeah, probably probably get a spanked bottom. But uh, it'd be funny nonetheless. So, it's had time to clear and breathe. And look at that there. Looks a good beer, doesn't it? You know, in, 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 in I would say in anybody's books, it's a hazy triple IPA. It's 10% hazy triple IPA. Tropical aromas. I won't say it's it's on a par with top breweries, but then again, they know what they they've been doing that for years. They do it day in day out. I brew like seven or eight times a year. tasting nice it is it's developed into a very nice beer um, I might on future Mondays try and bring back a live all depends if I'm not working life is busy at the moment supremely busy um, Good to see the homebrew catching up. I've just racked up the 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 20 bottles of the Dark Rock Brewing ne Nectar on Pale Ale. So that's that's on the rack in there to to condition for a couple of weeks. See how it goes. Longer the better. You know, brings out the best in the beer. I will, when it's ready, take it to um, the Appy Drinkers. And get them to all have a, have a sip of it and see what they think. As with this, um, I'm really happy with the, with the Young's Barley Wine that I brewed. Um, I think that's turned out cracking. Do want to go down to some more different beer kits, like I say. And uh, I'll tell you what, for the price, the Simply Beer Kits... They're good beer kits they are, especially if you can get any any beer kit you can get on offer, where it's a few months out of day, it doesn't bloody matter. The malt won't know. <laughs> the extract inside won't know it's out of day, you know, fucking hell. Unless when the air gets to it, it will, but uh, yeah. <laughs> but um, 
and I like them as well because they come they actually come in bloody sachets that are easy to clean tins I find tins so fucking annoying um, and fucking lids and dripping um, if you ever use tins you've got to use a wide fermenter don't even think about using a bloody thin top fermenter I've got a thin top fermenter and with tins it's an absolute bastard um, bagged extract and sachet extract wins there because you can pour it into the sachet or the bag swirl it around bash it in woof less you're losing but tins oh god see with tins you, you, you want to have a pair of rubbing gloves on a kettle and over the fermenter clean it that way so you get you, you know you, the, the wastage is 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 absolutely minimal um but yeah again fucking pain in the arse um Ooh. i'm gonna go in the arse i'm gonna get on the settee um and uh sit with the dog put the fleece on us and uh Watch a bit of um, watch a bit of Marvel, a bit of Harry Potter. I just fancy watching. That's what I fancy watching. So I'm gonna have a spot more of this. Love the one liter bottles. We, the kids, have one liter bottles. They're uh, well, kids. My son, two sons, thirteen and twenty. Twenty eight this year. Jesus. I mean, look at that. Big, thick, hazy. The world of homebrew is amazing. Kits can be played around with. You can, you know, it's always worth reading up on what people do and what successes they've had. Everyone makes a fuck up. I bought that hazel, I bought that syrup and chucked it in. At secondary fermentation. No. Chucked it in at, at the original fermentation instead of waiting until you bottle and chucking it in the barrel when you're ready for bottling because it adds the sugary element but it also adds the flavour. And uh, but anyway, that's what essence essence is better on that side of things and using sugar or drops in your bottles. Um, see the carbonation flowing up there so the bits of sediment from the bottom of the bottle you can see where they've gone in and the, the, they're going up and they're just splitting back into into back into the beer again um i've had this and i thought the beer was off so i had a load of beer underneath all my cupboards in the kitchen uh, when i worked at sainsbury's pulled them out they've all got big lumps like that and i'm like oh shit turn them upside down literally a minute later two minutes later all the bits have gone it's just formed back into the beer you know sediment basically um like now it's going up and it's just boof it's lovely to see it is lovely to see so raggies um xxxx <laughs> evil dog I think that's what I called it, didn't I? Uh, 4X, Evil Dog. Yeah. The triple IPA. I mean, basically, that's what breweries do. They, they, they do some it. And uh, the masters blend. Um, Bang the Elephant. Got to be honest. They're, they are connoisseurs. For blending, their blending of beers and barrels. They've learnt it, obviously, from some, from some good brewers. Um, Emperor's Brewery for one. Simon King for another. Blue Monkey. And this blending of beers from one to another. And ciders are the same. You blend a cider together. And uh, obviously, to blend anything, you've got to have a good stockpile of it to blend it, you know. Um, 
it's kind of done the same with this, this imperial stouts where I've blended um, spirits into the imperial stouts and uh, I've created some I mean that's the only way the only reason I, I would would get any more spirits in the beer room to blend with imperial stouts because uh, spirits and me were not good yeah uh, they go down too easy and uh, I live to regret the bugger um, in the long run, but you know. And uh, I'm trying to keep the alcohol content down, but I do like what I do. I, I, you know, I love the world of beer, as it were. So, that's tasting spot on. Um, there's a tropical taste to it. The sugary element has basically disappeared now. It's got a boozy element. You know, that 10% really does show. Um, it may well be stronger than 10%. Because what was sugar now, over time... As, as fermented out, bottle, bottle condition, bottle fermented out. So, it may well be stronger. How would you know? How would you know how strong it was? How would you, if it was sugary, and, you know, I'll be honest, I could taste the sugar. Piss me off. Did it reach that 13% promised land in the bottle? Because whatever yeast is in there has kept, nibbling away at the sugars and the, the boozy kick is there I suppose the only way you'd know is when you get rid of the brew and whatever it finished off at but whatever was left on the hydrometer and then put the hydrometer in again uh, like now and uh, if it's if that hydrometer has gone up more and more and more then you would know what the ABV is maybe that's a thing for a future test um, maybe I mean I'm thinking about doing I look at places like Brewday and Maltmiller. Um, what Hop seems told me about, and looking at their kits, and maybe thinking doing all grain, maybe chuck a couple of bags of sugar in as well, just to j jump the ABV up, an extra bag or even two bags of yeast, just to make sure different yeast, just to make sure that it it takes out the sugar. Uh, I've read from what emperors have said about using multiple bags of yeast don't depend on one bag of yeast to um, get that high ABV you know using that champagne yeast going overboard on the yeast to make sure that all the sugars as much of the sugar is fermented as you can possibly get that is interesting I mean, I've done my brews, two brews in the last two days. So I've done the best bitter, Harris Best Bitter. Although I think Harris and Dot Rock Brewing are exactly the same company, uh, personally. I think Dot Rock Brewing is like a, a modern version of their name. It just sounds better. Um, and I've done the, the St. Austell Cola um, Tribute Proper Job clone. And I think my next... Uh, Brews, if I'm with the for whole grain, has got to be a double IPA or an MP, but maybe change certain things on the MP. Um, do an MP, but not do a sticky toffee, you know, do something, something slightly different, different flavor. Um, using the using the um. Yeah. 
but that won't be till May now because um, I'm not brewing you know loads and loads and loads because you know time bottles I got the bottles and I'm trying not to use two litre bottles I'm trying to keep to one litre one litre bottles is a, a good night times bottle that is tasting lovely um, it's a big old review review chat chat about homebrew and whatnot um, I can feel it boy I can feel that not drink anymore I get a bollock in but uh, yeah um, that's tasting fine that is it's it's a lovely um, beer now it, it's certainly developed in something better than what it was originally I was I was I was disappointed originally it tasted good don't get me wrong <laughs> but I've tasted better and I know that these own brew kits these days can match grain I, I do think that if, if you tweak them so no scores but um, yeah that is tasting really really good now nice bit of tropical going off tropical citrus and strong Right, I'm going to cut the ass and I'm going to sit with a dog. Cheers, all. Huh?